Hey you guys, so two years ago this month, um, May 19th, 2019, I spoke at the Capitol at Mental Health Matters Day. And that was a huge deal for me and for many of you because a lot of you didn't know the amount of trauma I had lived through and my road to healing actually began two years ago when I gave that speech. So I kind of wanted to do an update, talk about healing. The speech topic was from trauma to hope. You know, speaking in front of thousands of people about trauma when you've never talked about that in your entire life was by far the hardest day of my life. But it was also the most freeing for so many different reasons. Because my life then began because it was mine. So everything after that was choices that I made that I got to make happen. Now, I know that seems trivial, but when you live in fear your entire life about talking about all the things that you're ashamed of, that have gone on, that you have fear about, like it's kind of like a personal hell that you've created within yourself of hiding everything. And for me since then, like I've been free. I've been free to live my life. I've been free to move. I've been free to make mistakes. I have been free to just be me. And so for me to be able to go on this journey, I'm so grateful and so appreciative of so many people that have helped me along the way. And I couldn't have done it without all of you, so thank you all so very much. So what has my life been like since I gave my speech at the Capitol? Well, I was so scared about talking about trauma and having complex PTSD that, you know, I. <laughs> I didn't know what my life would be like afterwards. I thought I would lose everything. And it's just been the complete opposite. I've gained so much work, friendships, um, opportunities, so many wonderful things have come my way. And it's because I chose to be honest and vulnerable that day. And that is something that is so unfamiliar to me, but something that was life changing. And I wanted to kind of give you some of the updates as they've kind of happened for me and how that process has kind of worked. So two years ago, I gave that speech. Last year in May, I decided to go to Southern California. I had always wanted to move back and wasn't happy living in Sacramento and took a trip down here. And three weeks later, I up and left after 11 years of being in Sacramento to move back to SoCal. I took a chance on myself and chose my happiness over everything else because I had worked too hard to stay in a situation that was only exemplifying and exacerbating my underlying conditions of depression, anxiety, and complex PTSD. Now, for many of you who wonder what it's like to live with complex PTSD, it is like every mental illness rolled into one and they call it PTSD and it's kind of one of those things that's it's complex PTSD for many reasons but it is um from childhood trauma and having to admit that I had less than desirable things go on in my childhood was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Now, when I talked about dealing with trauma, I would only talk about dealing with 18 to 37. And I realized back in January after I did a podcast, I was fearful about talking about my childhood, my parents. And I made the decision to finally go back and deal with my childhood. And this is a huge deal to me. It was life-changing, I will tell you that, to go back and actually verbalize what had gone on. Now, I would tell stories about my childhood, but I would never allow myself to feel the feelings and actually tell anyone what hell I lived through. And I had so much fear every time I talked about it, about the repercussions and what would happen to me, that I was literally living in that cycle of self-destruction and sabotage, basically, every time I would try to be vulnerable. And to be able to move on with my life, I finally got the courage to go back and start talking about it. So the last few months, I've actually, you know, shared with friends and people around me what my childhood actually entailed. And, you know, the best part about that is all the self-destructive behavior stopped. And I've learned to go back and reparent myself and tell that little girl that she's a badass and she did the best she could. And that's one of those things that I've dreaded my entire life having to go back and acknowledge that I lived through so many horrible things as a child. No child should ever live through that, much less live in fear to this day about talking about those things, that there would be repercussions for me telling the truth. And for the majority of my life, I didn't want to acknowledge that those things happened because I felt like if I talked about them, it gave them control. And I want to control so badly, I did it at the detriment of myself. And in the healing process, I realized I have three choices always, and this is it. It's my reaction. How do I react to people? How do I react to situations? I can laugh, I can cry, or I can give up and die. And dying is not really an option at this point, so it's either laugh or cry. And, you know, it takes a lot of strength to laugh. And I really mean this. I mean, sometimes I have to cry, but to be able to laugh at yourself, the choices you made, 
and to be able to be resilient in that fact and know your worth no matter what screwed up choice you made that is what a warrior is made of and so many people talk about the light like how much happier i look i am happier because i'm living my best life i'm living my truth and when i moved back to southern california i made a list because I, I read all these articles about how do you heal from ptsd i made this list of all the things that i need to forgive myself Four. It was four pages long. All the things I'd screwed up, all the people I'd hurt, everything, and I burned it. And for me, it was a new beginning. How do you begin to heal yourself? Is you forgive yourself. So people often talk about how I laugh about the past when I tell stories, and that's how I've chose to deal with it. I can sit there and feel bad about it and feel the guilt and the shame, or I can find the humor in it and realize that I was resilient enough to continue on despite the choices I was making, despite the pain I was in, despite the fact that it was less than a desirable outcome, I could always find something good and continue on. And that is the quality of a resilient person. Now, crying, there's nothing wrong with that. And I've had to really come to terms with that, that it is okay for the wheels to fall off the bus and have a meltdown as long as you get back up the next day and continue on you know the self-destructiveness and the shame and the guilt that will kill you that is the part of living with complex ptsd that will kill you but the rest of it you just got to get to the next day so moving forward with being able to heal yourself talk about these things advocate for others i had to become more introspective into my behaviors and i had to learn to be vulnerable and that means being vulnerable in romantic relationships and friendships and the more i've shared about my past and the healing the more i feel like you know I'm coming back. The real me, the authentic me, that little kid that was like mischievous and having a good time. I feel like everyone is seeing that person evolve again. Instead of living behind the fear and the judgments and what is going to happen next, I live in the childlike state. If you've ever read The Four Agreements, I suggest you revisit it. If you haven't, pick it up because the childlike stance that I live in <laughs> of shenanigans and everything, that is ideally what you're supposed to go back to is not worrying about like everyone else. Living your dreams. Do whatever your heart feels compelled to do. Not hurt other people, but do what feels right to you. Live in your purpose. What makes you happy without all the judgments, with all, all the limits? Start to live in that and you'll actually be free and able to accomplish anything. So for most of my life, mental health has been a very taboo subject. I'm sure a lot of you out there feel the same way, you know, the guilt and the shame surrounding it. Here's me to say, you know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with like not being okay. And asking for help is one of those things that, you know, we all struggle with so much. Much, but I couldn't have done it without asking for help. Giving that speech two years ago, I had no idea how many people that would help me. And that is how I've healed. Every day I thought I couldn't make it, I reached out to somebody and there has been somebody there for me. And I am so grateful that I finally gave that speech and was able to put myself out there, be vulnerable. The other day, someone said that I was sensitive. Now, if you'd said it to me a year ago, I would have been like, oh my God, what are you talking about? And then I realized to be sensitive means that you're putting yourself out there. There. You're allowing yourself to be vulnerable to judgment, rejection, being hurt. And if I'm saying that these are my boundaries and I feel like you're crossing them, that makes me sensitive. That means I've grown as a person because I'm allowing you into my world and there's nothing to feel ashamed of. I set limits. I set boundaries now. Like I say no, like, okay, like life goes on. Not everyone's going to like that. Not everyone needs to. And to live in my purpose and to be able to sit here and to say to you, like not every day is easy, but I keep going. I keep trying. And that is all you have to do. It is not going to be pretty. <laughs> I have made countless mistakes. But every single day that I get to live in Southern California, I am grateful. I am so grateful that I got the opportunity to go back to a place that makes me happy. A place that I'm loved, accepted, allowed to run free, and not have to deal with the negativity and judgment that surrounded a lot of my life. I just get to be me, and that is good enough. Not the queen of dating, but Jen Bryan again. And to me, that is what has been the most freeing, liberating, healing part of this journey. Anytime I need to be grounded, I can go to the beach. That's my happy place. So for all of you out there wondering like what to do, you feel stuck, do whatever it takes to find your happiness. There is not a roadmap. I can't tell you do this, do that. It's all going to be okay. But I can't tell you if you follow your heart, you know, you listen to your intuition, you work on yourself. It does get easier. Not every day is just this walk in the park. Promise you that there are the ups and the downs all day long, but I can tell you 
that I am so grateful for each and every one of you. I couldn't have done this without all of you. And, you know, keep on keeping on. You got this. I am right there with you working on my stuff. I am so, so privileged to be here before you even talk about these things. So thank you guys all for your love, support. Make sure to support one another. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Make sure you help one another and support. I love you all. Thank you guys for the continued support.